<clears throat> Hello. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to continue uh, my quest stuff and I'm going to demonstrate how to set a stage when the player walks through a trigger. So what I'm going to have is I'm going to have my quest will automatically start when I load up because I'm using the same save file I used for my last tutorial. And then we'll get an objective that says walk through the trigger. But you'll walk through a trigger and that's it, the quest will end. So it's just going to be a dead simple thing. But I imagine that you will have a stage, perhaps a stage in mind that you want to set. But obviously I'm just going to do this for tutorial purposes. So I've edited my file that I did yesterday so it will start immediately. So let's say for example you want to start on stage 10. If you just check your stage 10 run on start then it will start automatically and put in there set objective display 10. So we're going to want to define an objective for the 10 that we've written in here. And I've already defined one but you just right click new and hit in this index type in 10 and then we're going to type in what our objective is going to be. So mine's going to be walk through with a trigger like that. Okay and save that. And now I'm going to place a trigger in the world. So I'm going to place mine in the Abernathy farm area because that's where my uh, save is that I use for these videos. So I'll just load that up and then I'll do a little bit of a cut until it's loaded. Okay so I'm loaded up and I think we can do this in any order but I actually think I'm going to do it in a quest first. Um, I'm going to go back to st these quest stages and I'm going to create the stage that I want the trigger to set. So that'll be stage 20. And I'm just going to create a log entry and I'm just going to put a little prompt in here. Complete quest. So that's just for us to see. And I'm going to check this complete quest box like that. And that will wrap up the quest when this stage is set. But you might not want to complete your quest. You might want to demonstrate a new objective. So if you wanted to do that, you wouldn't click that. You'd just put in set objective displayed. Then in brackets, the number of the objective you want to display. But for me, I'm going to complete the quest. And if we're completing a quest, we also have to assign it quest completion XP, otherwise the file will generate a warning. So we can just, if we hit X, XP in this list, it'll drop down to all the different types of XP you can give. And obviously I don't have the exact values for all of these, but I'll just give myself XP faction smaller. Yes, it, doesn't really, it doesn't really matter for this. And so now the quest is set up, we're going to want to create our trigger now. So I'll, maybe, I'll make my trigger somewhere where it's easy to see where it is. So we'll put it inside this... Um, this cow pen here. So we're going to click this little T in this box up here and this is going to bring up a list of triggers. Now what advantage that the creation kit has over previous uh, um, over the other gex is that we can use the default stuff, we don't have to create any of our own stuff. So if we look for default set stage on trigger on trigger player only will be, and we've got this this tiny little trigger has appeared. I mean, yours might appear somewhere a little bit better than this. I don't know why it's appeared all the way down here. But it's these are very, very fiddly to resize. We need to like click and drag these arrows to resize it. And I'm going to try and get it as close to the size of a pen as possible. But again, just as long as it's somewhere where the player will walk through it or can walk through it, that's fine. But I'm just choosing this pen for tutorial purposes. And that's done, that seems to have done nicely. There we are. Normally I find it much more difficult because you have to click in literally exactly the right place. But you'll notice now, I mean, I don't know if your creation kit will do this, but mine does. If ever I draw a trigger, these things come up on every single object that I select. But I found that if I hit W twice, it goes away. But the problem is, we now can't resize the trigger. And that will stay like that until I draw another trigger. And I don't know, it didn't used to do this, it just started doing it recently, so I don't know why it's doing that. But if anybody does have any ideas, uh, you can comment that. So now we're going to double click on our trigger. And we're going to sidle along here until script comes up. And you'll see it's already got a script attached to it, default ref on trigger enter. And so we can edit this, and we're editing, because these will inherit script from the base object. So if we click edit base, we'll see it has a script here. We don't want to mess with this, because then that'll change every single trigger. We only want to change this one here because that's the reference, the, the script that's attached to the reference rather than the base object. And so here, these little green arrows, that means that it's inheriting these properties from a parent script from a base object. And we can just simply edit these properties now. So this is the advantage in the GEC, we'd have had to create a whole new script to point to our quest. Whereas all we need to do is edit the properties. We don't need to do any scripting at all, really. So we're going to look for our quest, which was tutorial level quest. 
and we're then going to change, um, oh shit, that's the phone, hold on. Okay, I'm back. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to edit this in constant stage to set, and the stage that I created to complete my quest was 20. So that's all we need to do. Okay, okay, save. So now when the player enters this trigger, stage 20 of my quest will be set, which for me is the completion, the completion uh, stage, but for you it might just be displaying of objective. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a quest marker to point to my trigger. So we're going to need to create an alias for this. So right click new reference alias. And I'm just going to give it an alias name. So I'm just going to call it, uh, just call it trigger. It doesn't really matter. And we're going to create a specific reference, select forced reference, select render in render with reference in render window. And we're going to double click on that. And default set stage trigger player only will come up. Hit OK, hit no. So now that is that, and I don't know why it's all, do I have caps lock on? I don't know why it's all capitalised. Oh well, it really doesn't matter. Um, so we're going to travel over to ooh, um, quest objectives, and the objective I defined earlier, walk through the trigger, right click new, select trigger, like that. So now what's going to happen is, because I've, I've set up this whole great long function to uh, set up my quest because it was part of the last thing, so what will happen is my quest will run on start, and so if, for example, you have whatever, if you want your quest to run on start, find whatever stage contains your first objective, hit run on start, or if you want it to be based on a player level, check out my last tutorial. So then objective displayed number 10 will show up, and number 10 is walk through the trigger, which is targeted to the trigger, and then when we walk through the trigger, tutorial level quest stage 20 is being set. And then tutorial level quest stage 20 will simply complete my quest. So hit OK, hit save on that, and now I'm going to go into the game and demonstrate that working. Alright, so the quest has started as soon as I loaded it up, and the objective is to walk through a trigger. Um, where's it gone? There it is. And we can see the uh, objective marker is pointing at our trigger inside the Brahmin pen. So when I go, I'll go in through the gates. When I go in here, I'll wait for all this shit to go away actually. There we go, nice and easy, got a decent amount of XP for doing that. We set a stage successfully for our trigger. And that's all you've got to do. Um, I think for the next tutorial I'll do something, I'll do a counter perhaps for the next tutorial. So setting a stage when a counter reaches a certain value seems like a good one. Usually based on uh, getting a certain amount of kills is probably the best bet for a counter. So hopefully that was useful, hopefully that was clear. Uh, thank you for watching and goodbye.